Good evening and welcome to the Carolyn Holt Show. Thank you so much for joining me uh, this evening. We have a, a great uh, guest in studio with us. His name is Dr. Michael Laurent, and he is the chair of the Marriage and Family um, Therapy Program at Cal State uh, Dominguez Hills. And he's also a licensed psychologist. So this is your opportunity. Now, if you have questions and issues uh, concerning therapy, tonight is your night to call. The number to call is area code 323-293-3375. Again, that's area code 323-293-3375 because uh, Dr. Laurent is a, a very smart guy and he will be able to help you to put some things uh, in perspective, uh, especially when it comes to um, issues of masculinity. Uh, Dr. Laurent, he had a private practice and as part of that practice, he saw uh, young males um, especially between the ages of 13 to 18. And he also had a mentoring program uh, on campus. So without further ado, good evening. Good evening, Carolyn. And so welcome. Uh, I, I'm, I'm delighted Thank you. that you said yes um, Thank you. to coming because you just have so much um, information and uh, so much um, uh, help that you can offer struggling parents and um, yeah. people who want to uh, gravitate to your particular field, especially for uh, marriage and family therapy. And uh, uh, being a licensed psychologist helps to just bring it all together so that uh, when, when they reach out to you, they are getting a little bit of everything. <laughs> I, hope <so. laughs> I hope so. But um, what I'd like to start with, uh, tonight is um, you sharing with me um, in terms of having a, a private practice, mm -hmm. uh, the issue of creating, uh, I guess, a platform so that masculinity mm -hmm. can be uh, not only uh, discussed but fostered yes. in, in young males because uh, getting them into therapy may not be the easiest thing yes. to make happen. So if you would... Uh, Talk to us a little bit about um, what you do in your practice and what you do in reference to your mentoring uh, okay. program. I'd be happy to. Well, thank uh, you. Mm -hmm. But um, let's see. Um, in my experiences as a licensed uh, psychologist and a licensed marital family therapist, mm -hmm. it's good to have an area of specialty, like okay. an expertise. All right. And so this is mine. And Excellent. uh I, I've been blessed to have a very wide variety of experiences, so um, have all the experience with a lot of populations, but some of my experiences with young men, especially African-American men, have always been close to my heart. Okay. So um, what I've done um, over the years is that, and, and I think we talked about this, mm -hmm. um, I was very successful uh, one of the few African male, African American male psychologists mm -hmm. uh, running um, men's groups for young African American men. Okay. Um, I really thought that the individual therapy was not always the route to go for a lot of uh, the young African American men, and unfortunately, a lot of the young men. Mm -hmm. If they had to go to counseling, they weren't going to counseling because they wanted to go. They were usually going because they had to go. Okay. They were mandated for counseling. Okay. They got into trouble. Oh, They're okay. on probation. Oh, um, okay. They've been referred for counseling by some agency. Okay. And so for a lot of these young men who were going in individually, mm -hmm. they were talking one-on-one, -on -one, but many times they were talking one-on-one -on -one with not somebody who really connected were exactly where they were coming from. Gotcha. So for some of these young men, when you put them more in a group dynamic, mm -hmm. it's harder for them to hide. Okay. And it's easier for a fellow young person to call that other person out on what they're doing and how they're acting out. And it's a place, too, that you can actually model 
some of that behavior. Okay. The last thing I think a lot of these young people want is somebody older just sitting there and saying, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this, you need to do this. I used to do this. I used to do this when I was a kid. I And young people are like, I'm tired of hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They don't want to hear that. Okay. But doing some of the uh, groups kind of leads into another form of counseling, and we've talked about it, how it, important it is for our young men, and that's the word mentoring. Excellent. Okay. And so, you know, the reason why a lot of African Americans aren't attracted to therapy mm -hmm. or counseling is it because they think it's really foreign to their culture. Okay. And they're just outside of their experience. But mentoring and learning and, and modeling uh, from people who are role models. Okay. Okay, that can actually connect. And you can really reach a lot of these young people through those means and not the traditional means of the individual therapy. Now, now how did you discover that, though? What, what happened for you to say, oh, yes, this, this is, is yeah. By accident. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. I well, made, that's a great answer. That's it. By accident. You make okay. mistakes along the way. And I was thinking, why, for instance, working at a, as a psychologist at a college, mm -hmm. why are these black men dropping out? Okay. I mean, why is the retention rate so poor mm -hmm. for some of these black men? Yeah. You know, they usually sit in the back of the classroom. Okay. They don't come up and ask for help. Mm -hmm. They're afraid to show that they have a weakness, that okay. they're not doing well. And then before you know it, they're gone. And so the retention rate is actually stronger for African-American women mm -hmm. than it is for African-American men. Okay. So a lot of men have problems in actually talking about whatever it is that's the issue, that's a problem for them. Okay. And so I found that individually I was having problems connecting with these young men, but setting up a group and actually going out to where they are instead of expecting them to come to me, it really drew them in. Oh, okay. And well, that motivated each other I was just as much say, as I motivated them. Well, that's a great thought yes. to go to them. Go and to them. and and I must say that's not something I have ever heard. I, I you always hear well bring them into the office. Yeah. No, the office has to come to them. You need to go to. I, I did uh, some work at a special project called um, a barbershop workshop. And Barbara, that's where I was going to talk to some of these black men. They may not come to a counseling center, but they go to the barber shop all this the time. This is magnificent. I, I never thought about that, but it is Out like here a, on Lamert, Lamert, <laughs> Lamert Park. We've it is got like barber a, shops. Uh, it's like a uh, uh, um, a, a, a men's place. group or yes. something. Yeah, that's, that's where you go. Well, the hair salon is that way for, for women. women. Yeah. But the barber shop, <laughs> and that's where the men talk. So oh. for some of the young people, they get their head cut or buzzed or whatever. Whatever they get. Whatever they're getting. And we're talking about, you know, anything from alcohol to drug, drugs. I give them information from the mm -hmm. program, the state program, Driving While Black. I don't you know if you've heard of that. Yes, I you have. Know. And I think most black males have have been them. pulled over for many reasons. We uh, show, you know, some of the material that I share with them, uh, what to say when you're pulled over by the police, what not to say when you're pulled over by the police. All this information is on www.aclu. You know, uh, I think it's com okay, or, or dot org. org. Uh -huh. dot org. So wow. you can get that information. And, you know, the barbershops were a great place for me to come there. Um, some of the older men, more my age, um, information on uh, black males and prostate problems or some of these other things. So wow. it was such a wonderful place. You sit in a barbershop, in a men's barbershop, especially a black men's barbershop, okay. over a while. You're going to hear a lot of very important stuff that's going around. So. Wow. So this is good then for um, a 13 to 18-year-olds to have the experience because you you uh, shared with me that yes. uh, there's a notion out there that perhaps women uh, uh, femininity can help mm -hmm. a man become a man but you say that they need mm -hmm. the input of other males they do yeah. and I don't always it doesn't always have to be uh, with 
a quote unquote biological father. Okay. Because I want to dispel one of the myths. One of the myths that's out there is that all single parents mm -hmm. uh, are, are going to be dis have a dysfunctional family, mm -hmm. that all these kids are going to grow up just terrible mm -hmm. if you don't have an actual father in the home. And that's not necessarily true. There are a lot of wonderful single parents that are out there doing an excellent job. Okay. So it's not so much that the uh, the wo the woman needs to marry the first man that comes in her <laughs> life so okay. the kid will have a quote unquote legally legal father figure but it just means that the men the adult men in that boy's family need to step up and like a village does needs to help raise that young man okay. and so i think when young men see that not just from the biological father but mm -hmm the other men around that particular young man, then they learn how to treat a woman, okay. how to respect a woman, okay. you know, how to talk to a woman. Okay. And if they don't see that from the grown-up level, mm -hmm. then it's hard for them to internalize that and do that themselves. Okay. So, well, and, and, and that... That makes sense. Even uh, as adults, you know, we kind of need um, strategy and guidance and direction when we're learning to, to do things. So it certainly makes sense for uh, young people. Now, when you have your mentoring program yeah. on uh, campus, what, what, is the, what is it that they can expect uh -huh. that will happen? Uh, first of all, how long does the program how long does it last? Um, well, I've had to break all the rules that I learned <laughs> in, in my PhD program, my okay. master's pro. I just, you know, everything that they taught me, I had to change up. Nobody in my master's or PhD program said, go out to a black barbershop. Mm -hmm. I had to do that on my own. Okay. Um, even in, in terms of the meetings, okay. um, uh, the training that everybody gets in schools is you've got a 50 minute hour, you've got so many sessions, you need, to, that's very Western in terms of Western psychology. Oh, so okay. what I do is, is that we try and keep it going mm -hmm. and we don't have a lot of the restrictions that I think other agencies that make money, that have very limited resources will do. So I've been running these black men's groups probably for 20 years. Wow. And yes, they've morphed. And, you know, we've got some people kind of move on. They get married. They move on. Okay. They uh, do things. We get a, the new group coming in, mm -hmm. young people. And then even within the group, there's a lot of mentoring. Oh, okay. And so some of the – and I just get a kick out of seeing the players, the guys that just couldn't have everything. You know, they couldn't do things right and would always mess up. Then they get to a point they're mentoring young people and telling them, well, you need to do this and get your <laughs> life together and stop messing around and treat women right. And I'm sitting there shaking my head like, oh, my God, this is the same person I was pulling my hair out over, you know, years ago. But somehow – People can turn themselves around mm -hmm. if they see um, a system, a group, a family, mm -hmm. or I don't know, whatever you want to call it, a tribe, a village, or, okay. you know, if they see a safe place. And I think that's why a lot of black men have problems, even when talking to uh, women or to other black women, okay. is, is that they're afraid of being in an unsafe place. And they're taught that the way you communicate is like the way you play poker. You don't show the other person your cards. Wow. Because if I show you my cards, mm -hmm. you might use one of those cards against me. Okay. And so that's why a lot of the men are not going to speak up in a relationship. They're not going to talk about what they need in a relationship mm -hmm. or they're just going to quietly go off and do something that they shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. in a relationship. Uh, they're really afraid of bringing that information out and really dealing with it. And if you're in a committed relationship or if you're in a marriage, mm -hmm. you know, don't, I tell this to all my couples, don't make a promise that you cannot keep. 
Wow. Well, that makes sense, though. Yeah. If, I mean, you can't, if you can't promise to be married, then don't make the promise to be married. You well, know? Um, now, are, are you of the opinion before, um, when, when people are couples and they still like each other a lot, right. uh, that they set up therapy then? Do you recommend that when their relationship is going good, yes. should they come into therapy if they are considering marriage uh -huh. um, uh -huh. before before the actual yes. marriage. I think that would be great, especially for certain couples. I wouldn't make it mandatory only because, you know, one size does not fit all. You can't mm -hmm. say this is the prescription for every single couple. It sure wasn't the, uh, the situation for my parents. <laughs> my parents was straight from Louisiana, or we don't even say Louisiana, we say Louisiana. Louisiana, Louisiana. okay. <laughs> so that's how you could tell my parents from Louisiana. Well, mine so, were from, they were from Louisiana and Texas as and well. So they I, didn't, they didn't have anything to do with this psychology stuff. Okay. So they stayed together through thick and through thin. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. when I was in therapy or starting doing psychology and therapy I said well you guys you know should do some of this stuff to like each other they said we don't have to like each other we're married, we're married oh my goodness well but, th that's a, a major component that most people believe anyway and I don't know if that right. comes from TV right or if it comes from I reality so. and I think that a lot of people their problem in the the relationship is that they expect everything's supposed to be equal and uh -oh. uh, here we go. <laughs> but a marriage, a relationship is not 50-50. I have to tell couples that. It's not supposed to be 50-50 when you get married. Uh, and that just makes so much sense to it's me not. because uh, if you're – if if it's two people yes. and, and each is only giving 50%. There's something lacking you there. It. You so, got it. You hit uh, it right on. That's exactly, they don't understand because they think of the term 50-50 as being fair. Mm -hmm. But just like you said, if you're giving 50, you're holding back 50. That's right. So. And so you really, and sometimes in a relationship, mm -hmm. somebody might have to work 70% of what they bring in. Somebody might have to work 30, and mm -hmm. then in a year or two, the other person 60, 40. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be able to fluctuate. And when, adjust that. In, a, in that kind of relationship, mm -hmm. it really becomes competitive if I say, well, you know, uh, I wash the dishes two times this week, and you only wash the dishes one time this week. <laughs> so what's up with that? Uh, and then, and I would say, you know, then we need to get a housekeeper and housekeeper. A, a dishwasher. Right. <laughs> but it's a, it's, it's, it's not, it's your family, it's your couple, it's your partner. Okay. So that should be something that you can, you know, don't worry should, so about, much about. In I was just going to say, you can work it out. And, work it out, and, yes, you know. So, yes. Yeah. Well, listen, if you want to talk to uh, Dr. Laurent, who has <laughs> great ideas about uh, therapy, uh, please feel free to call us at area code 323-293-3375. Again, that's 323-293-3375. We're going to go to break, and we'll be right back. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining uh, me this evening. I have Dr. Michael Laurent. He's the chair of the Marriage and Family Therapy Program at Cal State Dominguez Hills. And we are talking about a variety of things, but uh, certainly some of the challenges that's faced uh, by young men, uh, particularly 13 to 18, in terms of uh, therapy and in terms of uh, mentoring. And Dr. Laurent uh, has a, a great uh, program uh, that he does at uh, Cal State Dominguez Hills. Now, is there a fee mm -hmm. for the, the mentoring aspect? If, if, uh, if young people get sent to the mentoring program, is there a fee that has to be paid this. Well, when I started the program, I was a psychologist on the campus. Oh, okay. So my audience were the black men 
who were students there okay. at Cal State Dominguez Hills. So those are most of the students that I've been mentoring directly. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of those black male groups that are kind of out there in the community, um, I've done those, but they haven't been as you know, long lasting as week by week by week by week. Okay. Uh, when we were on the campus together, um, that was just like every week oh, okay. we would meet. Oh, okay. Fridays at one o'clock would be our standard time. Um, so they wouldn't pay since they were students okay. of the campus. Um, it's just harder to get these groups started mm-hmm. in the community. Okay. And fortunately, some of my students that I've mentored are now starting some of these young black men groups wow. with high school students, with students in junior high. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, some of these very same young people, mm-hmm. they've taken this message, and it really just, it's just, it, it just warms my heart. It's just the most beautiful thing to see it kind of carried on. Okay. And like I said, these were the, some of the same young men that I kind of used to lecture they're not passing on the same lecture to their young people. Yes. They're coming up from behind them. So yes. Uh, now, what what would you say is the uh, typical fee, though, if if uh, parents are out there and they're saying, you know, I, I think my child may need some help, and I do want to send them um, somewhere. What what's the typical range for uh, therapy? Um, yeah. Well, I think for most of the group groups, let's just say okay. you t- you got in touch with a private practitioner, okay. somebody who's licensed, who has their office, they're usually doing this mm-hmm. uh, for their own uh, income in private practice. Uh, usual group f- fees can be anywhere between 25 to $75 oh, an yeah. hour. And that's very, very reasonable. Yes, it is. That's very reasonable. But what I would advise the listeners to do would be to call some of the agencies that okay. are in their community mm-hmm. that might already be on a sliding scale. Okay. And they have sliding to look, scale they have then to look is for what those they words. Okay. Uh-huh. Sliding scale, and it's unfortunate, but some of the um, consumers have to actually say it to the agency. Hey, have you thought about having a group for young? African-American teenagers okay. like my son. All right. And that's really where the ball gets going because they take your son's name down. They take Mrs. Davis's son's name down. They take okay. Mrs. Jones. So it's just that for a lot of places, they're not going to invent this all their own. Mm-hmm. Some of the parents and people in the community have to tell the agency, yeah. look, you guys should have um, a group for young uh, African American girls mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. learn about body image and okay. beauty okay. and self respect yeah. and self self esteem and that sort of thing. Yes. Well, um, there is a number yes. that people can call if if uh, if they so desire to l- yes. allow you yes. to offer some of your colleagues and exactly. the people that you know what. Should I give that? Yes. Okay. What be is happy that number? To. Yes. Uh, and this would be to me. Okay. Uh, Excellent. Directly. Excellent. Um, so um, my telephone number at the campus at Cal State Dominguez Hills is area code 310-243-2693. So again, it's 310-243-2693. Okay. Or they can, they're welcome to email me directly at my email address, which is M. Laurent, and that's spelled M L A U R E N T at C S U D H dot E D U. Okay. Either way, most happy to just, you know, give information, forward information. Mm-hmm. I think that's what we need to do is just talk to each other. You know, that's that's how we find things out is just by, you know, yes, who you last talked to. Yes. 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 <laughs> Uh-huh. Now, when we went to um, break, we were we were uh, talking a little bit. Since you are the chair of the marriage and family uh, okay. therapy uh, program, um, we were talking a little bit about um, couples mm-hmm. and uh, what might uh, be beneficial right. to them before yes. um, they get uh, married. Now, um, it's my understanding uh, there's a 
uh, a dating service called, uh, I think it's eHarmony. Yes. Now, on uh, eHarmony, yes. they talk about uh -huh. compatibility. And, and this, uh, the selling tool there uh, is that uh, you should be compatible uh -huh. in about 29 uh, different areas okay. uh, before you make a decision to uh, okay. get married. Mm -hmm. So uh, in in your sessions with uh, folks uh, who who want to take that leap, mm -hmm. what what uh, what's the overall thought you have uh, in terms of what uh, yeah. to really focus on? Right. Well, you know, I, I think we were. I was joking, but I, it was the honest truth with my parents from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they didn't have the kind of compatibility where they were the same. Mm -hmm. They didn't like the same things. Okay. They didn't like the same activities. Sometimes they didn't even like the same people. Okay. But they loved each other very much. Mm -hmm. And okay. so that's where the compatibility was. It's not so much being the same. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us like people who are like us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you if you have the ability to like someone different than you, okay. then you're respecting and you're attracted to something beyond your own likes mm -hmm. and dislikes. But there's safety, though, in right. at least you feel safe in thinking that if um, <laughs> if it's comfortable, yes. then it won't cause you any problems. Yeah. Uh, well, that's not necessarily true, not is necessarily what you're saying. True. Yes. It's not. It really isn't. They really have to have that kind of compatibility mm -hmm. that's more based on, as we were talking about, you know, maybe 70-30, not 50-50, but mm -hmm. maybe 80-20. Sometimes it'll be, you know, 40-60. Mm -hmm. It just depends relationship is fluid, mm -hmm. meaning that it can't just go by the numbers. We can't just put you in a computer and say, the computer says you will marry her and then she <laughs> will marry you. And you'll and, be happy. And you'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> and then they wonder what's going on because they may not have that initial love and respect mm -hmm. that is not measurable just in well, do you like jazz and do I like jazz? Okay. Do you like concerts? Do I like concerts? It's mm -hmm. it's more than that. It's mm -hmm. how much you're willing to sacrifice that individual part of yourself mm -hmm. to be part of a couple. Okay. Can well, that you makes make sense. that sacrifice? Yeah, you're you're moving from uh, uh, one person. Yes. To really being one person. Exactly. Yeah. Ex I, I, and that's a whole different mindset that will blow people's mind open because uh, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. We still think as individuals. Mm -hmm. And so you can't do that if you're, you know, on the same team. And a lot of couples, they don't act like they're on the same team. Yeah, and and I, and I would suppose that when when things don't go as uh, they expect, yeah. they they probably don't fight um, mm -hmm. fairly. Yes, a lot of. And um, that can cause yes. um, a lot of uh, problems. Right. And, and, and speak to that a little bit in terms of uh, uh, disagreement mm -hmm. and conflict. Mm -hmm. What would be the um, best approach the best in, a, in, a, in a relationship, especially if you want to keep it, yes, if you yes. want to keep your relationship. Yes. Well, you know, there are going to be some disagreements and some conflicts. I know with my parents, I saw them and, you know, and knew the, of them, mm -hmm. but they had certain things and then it only came from the old school. It didn't come from my, any of my textbooks, Okay. but <laughs> <laughs> they used to always say, um, uh, never let the sun go down on an argument mm -hmm. you or your that? anger uh -huh. <laughs> yes and so it was like you know blah 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 you can argue blah 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 okay uh -huh. now it's time to go to bed right okay right. okay so you have to make a uh, peace or you know you have to have to you have to have a treaty okay with uh, your partner where you may disagree on certain things but you still share a common goal Okay. You know, you have these core feelings All right. that really shouldn't be messed with. So okay. even though we agree, we disagree on where to live, uh, that <laughs> shouldn't pull us apart, I hope, because we still, you know, love each other. Okay. So, you know, it just depends on how strong that core relationship is. Yeah, well, my, I, I have a theory. I, my theory is um, 
it, whatever the issue is, mm. I, I, I don't think you should be angry uh, longer than 24 hours about it. Oh, very good. And, and the reason, uh, this is just my personal opinion, not b that I got this information from yes. a therapist or anything, but mm. the reason I think that um, 24 hours is, is long enough because it, it gives you time right. to uh, think about it. It gives you time to put it in perspective. And, and right. women are often accused that they can uh, be angry for months on end and uh, go to bed angry and wake up angry. Now, my position is, that's well, right. that's not beneficial, that's not uh, right. but address mm -hmm. what really is the problem within that 24-hour mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, and if he, and even if you still don't, even if you still don't come up with a solution, it's, um, you know, you can at least go to bed and say, we agree to disagree. Okay. Okay. And that's part of fighting fair. All right. To be able to admit that we agree to disagree. Okay. I hear you're saying it from one direction and mm -hmm. I'm talking from another direction. Okay. <laughs> we may need to table that okay. for tonight because we got to go to bed. We got to get up for work tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know? And so I agree. We shouldn't go to bed angry. We shouldn't. That will affect your health. Mm -hmm. It'll give you headaches. It'll give you back aches. <laughs> it gives you and all, other kind uh, of all of nightmares. It yeah. just, you know, really yeah. just messes with you. Mm -hmm. And you don't need that from the person that you're choosing to be with. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's your partner, if that's your enemy, then that's your enemy. <laughs> but I, I think that some people are sleeping with the enemy. Yes. Uh, oh. There's a movie called yeah. that. <laughs> right. I, I'm not sure it's quite about I, that. It's there's... not quite about that, yeah, but it's, about it's almost the model for mm -hmm. some couples because they wake up and it's like that's their enemy. But that, that can't be. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other people out there probably – more deserving to be the enemy, but it's really unhappy if that's day after day after day yeah. Yeah. and you have that much hurt yes. or that much anger. Yeah. And who wants on. to come home uh, to that? Nobody. No, no, it's not good. So that's when I would tell people, look, I don't believe in psychology for everyone. I don't believe in therapy for everyone. But in those cases, you need to come in. Oh, okay. You need to talk now, to somebody. Now, that's an interesting statement that you don't yeah. believe in therapy for everyone yeah. and psychology for yeah. everyone. So give me an example of um, what... Examples yes. of other th yes. alternatives? Yes. Uh, church, yeah. you know. Okay, and prayer. Because I, I, I believe... That's it. Definitely. That's in it. Okay. And some people, if they have the kind of faith the system mm -hmm. that is not shaming them. It's not, okay. you know, hurting them. It's not, you know, uh, degrading anybody. It's not trying to control, mm -hmm. you know, one sex over the other or trying to limit, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the power in the relationship. Right. Then for some people, that's a very safe and wonderful place to, to find that. Okay. Um, there are some families that they have elders or they may have people in that family that they look to for advice, a grandparent or grandmother that said, look, you guys stop all this clowning around. Okay. okay? <laughs> uh, you know, and, and so it doesn't always have to be a psychologist, mm -hmm. you know, so um, it's only in some of those um, instances where all else has failed. Okay. And so I work in um, those situations, not saying that this is a panacea, mm -hmm. that, you know, everything has to be through psychology, but sometimes you got to do something. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, now, we had an interesting uh, discussion you and I did about um, women. Yeah. In, in when you ask them, you know, well, what is it? Yeah that you're looking for in a, in a mate <laughs> right. and in a guy. Yes. And uh, one of the things that we discussed, we didn't discuss what they should be looking for, yes. but you certainly mentioned yeah. that this notion about if a guy loves his mother, right, right, right. then he will definitely love you. And that's the myth. <laughs> that's the myth. And that's, I think, what women, a lot of women have believed that myth. They believe okay. the myth that, 
the best way to find a good man okay. is to watch and see how that man treats his mother. Okay. And that is a lie. Okay, it's that's a lie. a lie. Okay. That's a lie because right. there are a lot of men who love their mothers, their mothers, bo mama's boys. They're just, you know, they just, they have a different relationship with their mothers because they may not even see their mothers as actual women who mm. are equals or competitors okay. or some of the mothers may be overindulgent and mm -hmm. yes, baby, whatever you want, baby. Okay, baby. Okay. I'll buy you that baby. Mm. And then a wife says, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then pow, mm -hmm. you know, big fight. Like what is, what is going on? So I told, I tell some of the women do not look at a man and see how the man treats his mother. Okay. What you need to do, and I tell the advice to the women, okay. you need to look at a man and see how that man's father treated his mother. Okay. So, so it is the father that we need to be paying attention the to. The father. And also the child who looks at how a woman is respected looks okay. at how a woman is treated or talked to. Right. They, lo they learn even unconsciously how to talk by based on how the adult men have talked to the mother. Mm -hmm. And so if it's a father that always respects his mother, that the father, the men really mm -hmm. do um, support okay. and respect the woman then the young boy learns that. But I think okay. we had talked about that. That was an issue with the, uh, I, I said rapper. My students said, no, Chris Brown is not a rapper. He's a singer. Oh, okay. <laughs> but remember <laughs> the story about uh, Chris, Chris Brown, Brown and Rihanna. And Rihanna is mm -hmm. that. And, you know, he was, it was, he was documented as saying even long before, you know, he had picked a lot of that stuff up from growing up mm -hmm. and even unconsciously. Okay. taking that in and promising I'll never hit a woman, I'll never hit a woman, I'll never hit a woman, and then pow. Mm. And so for a lot of these men, they pick up stuff and they kind of put it in the back of their heads mm -hmm. and they don't deal with it and it just comes out in a relationship mm -hmm. and they wonder why. Mm -hmm. and, they wonder. and and many times, like you said, it, it may not be um, what they even intended right but uh, sometimes when you're when you are angry yes and someone says something that you don't like uh -huh. uh, often you resort to a, a, a physical yeah. uh, altercation because that's all you know to I guess do so. uh, perhaps in that moment or you've seen it mm -hmm. but you know uh, you know for all the batterers that I've worked with over the years okay uh, the people who have done battering against women they are not the people that go to the boss and say I want to raise pow you know mm -hmm. and punch him right in the face they don't do that but for to, in, if to the their boss, boss if, if it's male well, if it's male, probably it's not fe female, too. Okay. There's something about the domestic, not domestic, but that intimate partner violence. That's what they call it now. There's okay. something about within the realm of the relationship, mm -hmm. how it can get physical and violent because there's more of a sense of ownership or control mm -hmm. or I don't like this or you're telling me what to do or you're not my mother. Okay. You're not going to tell me what to do. Stop trying to treat me like as if I'm a child. Okay. So all this stuff kind of comes out unconsciously, mm -hmm. and these men are reacting to it mostly in their relationships. Okay. All right. Now, uh, but besides that, what what the what? Just give me two other exactly. things that women should look for in a mate. Uh, well, um, you don't even have to give, but some something else other than okay. <laughs> he so, she, he should uh, love his mother. Yeah, or other than his father loving his mother, mm -hmm. or seeing that. Um, I think you know, honesty. Okay. Honesty, 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 <laughs> honesty. Transparency, transparency. transparency. <laughs> but a lot of times, people really don't want to hear the truth. And so I tell ladies, I say, you know, go in there and say, look, I'm going to be real honest. Okay. And so we need to really understand if we're going to have a commitment here, we're going to have a commitment. Okay. But if you 
want if you want to be a freak please tell me that you want to be a freak there's nothing wrong you can go to freak town or find a, but if you want to be a freak tell me that you want to be a freak just be honest okay so, so i'll know right, what i'm dealing with because that's the biggest problem with che cheating it's not just the infidelity it's the lying that's the part okay. that really hurts. And so for a lot of those people, when they start a relationship, if you are honest from the beginning, then it's like, okay, all right, bye-bye, bye-bye. It's not. But for a lot of couples, they're afraid to look at the truth. Mm -hmm. And if they were able to really get down there in the dirty, you know, mess of it and just all the truth, the good, the bad, the, the ugly parts, the... I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. It's tough. It's yes. tough being honest. Yes. It's I, I, very I difficult that, that being honest. That makes sense, yeah. Because everybody's got this kind of game where if I hold back, I'm not really sure, what are you going to do? If I say this, what yes. am I not going to do if mm -hmm. you say that? And um, that's the game that goes on. But I think honesty, if couples had honesty, that I think would be another place for that. Okay. For them to start so uh you want to look for a uh, an honest man an honest man and they they, they do exist but <laughs> but they have what? to feel say that again they honest men really do they exist. really do exist but they have to be just kind of hit in the head with it somebody that just really will just lay it out there Okay. And if well, it's not, not meant to be, it's not meant to be. Okay. Well, hold that thought because we're going to go to break. Okay. And when we come back, okay. uh, we're going to wrap this conversation we'll up. I love okay. this. Yeah. Master and math can be big fun. Fun for you and everyone. Play it each and every day. Master math the easy way. Sing, play it. Uh. Math Maze. Why not turn math time into fun time with Math Maze, the new game craze. Get yours today at mathmaze.us. Mom, now you can help your son master math and have big fun. Play it each and every day. Master math the easy way. Sing, play it. Yeah. Make sure your child owns the skills necessary for success in high school algebra. Get it now. MathMaze.us. MathMaze.us. And now you can help your daughter play it like you know your daughter. Play it each and every day. Master Math, the easy way. Say it. Play it. MathMaze. MathMaze cards contain both Spanish and English. Get yours today at MathMaze.us. That's MathMaze.us. And we are back. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. We we are having a wonderful time with uh, Dr. Michael Laurent, and he's talking about uh, relationships and men and masculinity and therapy and all of those things. So now, if you're thinking of getting married, uh, if you need some help with uh, uh, teenage boys in particular, uh, or any of those concerns, Please feel free to call us here at area code 323-293-3375. Again, that's area code 323-293-3375. Because um, Dr. Laurent is, uh, as they say, he's uh, dropping knowledge. <laughs> and so um, yeah. we, we don't want to um, keep making the same mistakes uh, that we've done in the past. So if you uh, want to really get perspective about um, your children and your relationship, this is the place to call. Now, when we uh, went to break, we were helping women to uh, think about what the good things are that they should be looking for in a mate. And uh, Dr. Laurent says that honesty is a very important uh, component. So when you discover that perhaps you're not honest or the person that you have selected is not honest, what should you do? Should you really uh, evaluate the relationship at that point and 
design some kind of exit uh, strategy? Or are there times when it's perhaps sal salvageable, mm -hmm. but you need to mm -hmm. do some work? So how, how, what, how would you characterize doing that? Well, I think, you know, it goes back to something you said, which is really important, um, you know, uh, term, okay. uh, fighting fair. Okay. So when you fight fair or when you're in a relationship, even if it's splitting up, even if you're going through a real difficult time, mm -hmm. you know, you need to be fair. You need okay. to be fair, even though it's not going right. Um, so either you're going to have to, you know, um, try to get some help, mm -hmm. talk to a person, talk to a therapist. There are licensed marital family therapists, there are licensed clinical social workers, there are licensed professional counselors, uh, there are people that are doing uh, counseling on a sliding scale, mm -hmm. there are interns, there are trainees. So okay. it's not that there's not help outside, but that may be a time for you as a couple to try and get some help. Mm -hmm. And there may be those couples that should start talking about you know, making a break. Mm -hmm. But even that takes fighting fair. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people think, well, if you break up, it's got to be me versus you. I throw your stuff mm -hmm. out on the curb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I start, you know, try attacking you. And, you know, and, and maybe there's a need to split up mm -hmm. in ways where it's fair. Okay. And so especially when there are kids involved. Okay, that's you know, a when very you have good. kids in the family, you know, they're being torn in different directions. Mm -hmm. They don't know. And so um, you've got to think about that fairness, mm -hmm. even if it means that the goal may be trying to separate, but in a way, not where you're happy and you're best friends. You don't have to stay best friends, but okay. at least civilly so there's not more damage than before been previously. Yeah, and, and, and that's a good point that you bring up that um, you don't have to turn the other person into um, an animal or some other kind of name. That's right. Uh, just because you can't uh, right. uh, be able to yeah. continue a uh, relationship. Yeah. With Imagine him. you telling your, your son, you know, I can't stand your father. I can't, I can't, he makes me sick. Mm -hmm. The kid is like, well, look, I didn't pick him, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. that's true. So, and what don't drag do? the poor kid don't into Don't drag the kid into it, but that's what we do when we're angry. Mm -hmm. And that's not part of the fighting fair, you yeah. know. And 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 by fighting fair, you don't mean um entering into a physical no physical uh, altercation no. because uh, you and I we talked about Dude. that and yes. um and your position is that there is never a time Never. that a man mm -hmm. should hit a woman. That's right. And I wouldn't want somebody hitting my wife, mm -hmm. and that includes me. Okay. That includes me. And you don't want somebody hitting your daughter, or That's you right. don't want somebody hitting your mother. Exactly. So but. if you think of it like that way, yes, you're going to be frustrated. Yes, you're going to be angry. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are going to be times where you're totally frustrated, but you know, you don't, we were talking about, you don't go to your boss and say, hey, I need a raise and pow, just mm -hmm. punch him in the, if it, you don't, you, you know, you don't go up to the cops and say, you know, hey, you guys aren't, you know, doing things, fair. pow. Mm -hmm. you, you just can't act in that way. Okay. And so for a lot of the men that do get picked up for domestic violence, they call it intimate violence or intimate partner violence now. Mm -hmm. But um, they don't realize that, that's the way that they react, okay. you know, and if somebody is cheating or, or, or fooling around and whatever. they're unfaithful and whatever, mm -hmm. you got to let that go. Okay. You know, that's not really something you want to keep anyway. Right. So. Now, the, the flip side of that that I hear from the men yeah. is that the women talk too much yeah. and they talk too loud and they use a very colorful language. Okay. And uh, that's how it escalates, it escalates. to yes. a, a physical uh, altercation. Yes. And they feel that <laughs> women just need to be oh, quiet. Okay. Well, I can only tell them that <laughs> once they get in front of a judge, that doesn't mean anything. 
Okay. So they can say, Judge, she talks too much. Mm -hmm. And Judge, she yells too loud. And okay. Judge, she gets in my face. <laughs> but they'll say, yeah, but we're putting you in jail because you put your hands on her. Okay. And so for these young black men, they've really got to learn that they may get into a relationship that maybe it does seem like the young man is being egged on and mm -hmm. kind of drawn in. They've got to learn how to avoid those traps. Okay. They've got to learn how to stay away from that. And that can happen for them yeah. um, if they get themselves into some kind of, even if it's not therapy, right. a, a, a mentoring, mentoring uh, program uh, situation mm -hmm. to where they can better um, handle and, 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 and better evaluate, mm -hmm. you know, what to do when um, mm -hmm. these uh, things come up. Come because up. in the heat of the moment, you know, yeah. uh, you can think about yeah. uh, a lot of things yeah. that uh, you want to do. Exactly. But uh, you said something earlier that uh, is often um, not part of the equation. And you said, uh, you know, belonging to church or having, yeah. a spiritual having a spiritual center. Yes. Uh -huh. um, that can be a powerful thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, but let's just say that that's not, uh, you know, part of mm -hmm. uh, a, a particular couple's um, repertoire. They, they're they not uh, spiritually based. Would you recommend that they try to add that or? Yeah. Well, that's something. It's, it's hard because, you know, spirit, spiritualness, mm -hmm. uh, that's something that's hard to to uh, kind of force upon a person, right? Um, but it's it's just I just try and say reality means stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Black men are being arrested at alarming rates. Yes, our black men are in the prisons um, overwhelmingly more than any other group, and so mm -hmm. stay out of trouble. Yeah, and at least for your own protection. Yeah, you know, kind of defuse some of these. Um, these things. Okay. Now, the last uh, thing that we want to talk about, we have about uh, five minutes left. And if you want to sure. participate in tonight's conversation, you can feel free to call 323-293-3375. Sure. Um, in, in the role of uh, parenting, yeah. um, there's this notion out there about uh, nurturing versus um, tough love. Yeah. And you were uh, trying to get clarification about what what is the expectation uh, regarding uh, nurturing mm -hmm. versus uh, tough love? Now, tough love, most people understand because that's the standards that most parents mm -hmm. uh, set for their uh, children, mm -hmm. and they um, expect them mm -hmm. to live up to it. Mm -hmm. But the nurturing part is that uh, children expect that you should talk to them softly mm -hmm. and consider their feelings at every turn. And uh, that's their uh, vision yes. about what nurturing is. And so w how do you speak to that, uh, speak to that yeah. in, in terms of parents understanding? Uh -huh. No, tough love is, uh -huh. is what I should operate under in this situation yes. versus nurturing, which is what the child wants. Well, when I've done parenting classes, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the parents – we get a little upset at first, but what we teach in, in those classes is that young people actually want structure. And so that's the word to always keep in the back of your mind, structure. Okay. So you don't have to get angry and you don't have to be passive. Mm -hmm. you just these are rules. Mm -hmm. So you don't get angry. You say, I'm sorry, you know, well, I guess you're not going to go to Magic Mountain next week. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't care. And you, that's unfair. <laughs> and you're the worst mother in the world. And, you know, why should you get upset as a parent? Because mm -hmm. you won't go to Magic Mountain. Mm -hmm. So if you have structure, if the kid learns that there are structure. It's not about how hard are you, how easy are you. You mm -hmm. just teach the child there are rules. Mm -hmm. And in the real world, there are other rules, like right. you get a ticket mm -hmm. if you drive 90 miles an hour on the freeway. Mm -hmm. But those are the rules. That's mm -hmm. the structure. And so when kids have good structure mm -hmm. and they know that the parents mean it, yes. that that's the structure, 
they learn that and they actually do a lot better. Yeah, because I was going to say uh, the the besides structure, you have to be consistent, consistent, and follow consistent. through because uh, many times they are waiting. They'll know just one time They'll when know. you don't uh, do whatever it is That's that right. you threaten. That's right. <laughs> that Some kids they'd rather get a whooping than not go to Magic Mountain. They'll say, "Go ahead and beat me right now, Mom." Because mm-hmm. I really right want to go. I want to go to Magic Mountain. No, I know where. You, this hurts because mm-hmm. it's what you wanted to do. You were looking for Magic Mountain, but you broke this rule. Mm-hmm. That's part of the structure. Yes. So, you know, and then parents need to take anger out of their parenting. If wow. It, now that's a, that's that's a thought. That's <laughs> it. You know, it shouldn't be out of anger. It's just these are the rules. You okay. didn't listen when I told you to listen. Mm-hmm. These are the consequences. Mm-hmm. That's what we learn from life, our okay. consequences. Not we have to get totally out, bent out of the shape and start getting so angry and mm-hmm. volatile. Not necessary for parenting. Well, you know, that's the first time that I've <laughs> ever heard that, though, that yeah. anger should. Um, Take it out of parenting. I, 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 I do know that that is kind of where mm-hmm. most people go first. Is well, that's a whole, that, we, that was originally the stuff behind tough love. Okay. It wasn't about tough love. I'm a pow. I'm going to spank you tough. That's not tough love. Okay. Tough love is this is the structure. These are the rules. Deal with it. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be consistent in consistent. enforcing them. That's it. And therefore you that's have to be yeah. okay at some point that's with it. following. Yeah. No yelling, no screaming, no hitting. Just that's it. Wow. Well, I tell you, uh, this has been an eye-opening experience, even for me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we want to thank you, oh, thank uh, you. Dr. Laurent, for coming and uh, sharing uh, with us. Pleasure. And again, um, he's going to give you the phone number. If you need some help uh, in terms of selecting a professional, mm-hmm. um, the number you can call is? 310 uh-huh. 243 Mm-hmm. Two six nine three, and that is your line. Yeah, that's and, and you can leave a message, or you can email directly m laurent m l a u r e n t at c s u d h dot e d u. And sometimes the email is better because you can give me time to get back in touch with you. And I have a lot of people who keep calling my number and they hang up. They call my number and they hang up. They say, I, I called you five times. And I said, but you didn't leave a message. Oh, no, I didn't leave a message. I just wanted to keep calling until you picked up the phone. Oh, my goodness. So they kind of think yeah. that you're sitting yeah, there. Yeah, I'm sitting there just waiting for anybody to call. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you've got to kind of like give me some time to right. get back in touch with you. So if people do that, I'm more than happy to try to help. Well, thank you. We appreciate the work that you're doing oh, and you're, you. you have given some great food for thought in terms of helping um, this with this masculine process that uh, we all struggle with. Yeah. But uh, you've given great ideas in, oh, in terms you. of how to move forward. So thank, thank you. you. And thank you for your show. And thank you very much for joining me. Uh, next week, we won't be here, but uh, join me again on July 11th. And until then, just keep your head up. And please know that the goal is to move from misery to magnificence and from subpar to spectacular. Good night. Master and math can be big fun. Fun for you and everyone. Play it each and every day. Master math the easy way. Say it, play it. Uh. Math Maze. Why not turn math time into fun time with Math Maze, the new game craze. Get yours today at mathmaze.us. Mom, now you can help your son master math and have big fun. Play it each and every day. Master math the easy way. Play it. Make sure your child owns the skills necessary for success in high school algebra. Get it now. MathMaze.us. MathMaze.us. And now you can help your daughter play it like you know your order. Play it each and every day. Master Math the easy way. Say it. Play it. MathMaze. MathMaze cards contain both Spanish and English. Get yours today at MathMaze.us. That's MathMaze.us.